Be who you are on purpose. Mm -hmm. Live with intentionality. Don't just wake up and react to what the world throws at you. Be who you are on purpose. And that means consciously decide what's important to you and pursue that with intention and own it. Mm -hmm. Don't run from it, own it. Somebody said, did you say that? Yes, I did. That's right. And I'll and say why? it again. You use a phrase a lot called tyranny of the fringe. Elaborate on that and its impact on our culture. Well, I think right now we have a, a lot of activists mm -hmm that are trying to, in my opinion, hijack the narrative in America. They're, they're trying to rewrite history, rewrite science, rewrite biology, re rewrite so many of the things that are steeped in fact, empirical data, uh, that are just unassailable truths. And they're just saying, well, I, that, that's not how I want it to be. So I'm just gonna decide that there's a, a whole new truth. Well, there aren't versions of the truth. <laughs> you know, there's the truth. And then there's some other stuff mm -hmm. yeah. that you can talk about. And uh, I think the tyranny of the fringe describes those that are out on the fringe on both sides of the continuum, mm -hmm. extreme right and extreme left, yes. that want things to be different so they're just gonna pretend that it is, yeah. but it's not. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna change things, there are some things that are up for change, but you know, science, history that's already occurred. I mean, that's why they call it history. It's happened. Right. Yes. And there are some dark times. There are times in our country's history that are not our finest hour. We'll never learn if we don't acknowledge our mistakes, if we don't acknowledge times when our values uh, didn't follow the moral compass. They may have followed the mores and folkways of the times, mm -hmm but they weren't our finest hour. If we don't acknowledge that to kids that are growing up and getting educated, how are they gonna know the difference between good and bad, right and wrong? Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the other things they say is that convince them that the enemy doesn't exist. Yeah, so, uh, it's all conspiracy, it's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. right. And it's so interesting to me that people say, well, we have free speech here, we have First Amendment uh, protections and it's not the government that's trying to muzzle us. We're doing it to each other. Right. Yeah. That's the cancel culture. Mm -hmm. We've got three times as many people afraid to express their opinions now yep. than we had in 1950. So what I'm doing in this book is really, it's, a, it's very prescriptive. The subtitle is, is important here as the title itself, how to mm -hmm. stand strong for America's soul and sanity. How to, because this is a, a book that people, I think, will go back to time and time again, because if people are talking to them about social media, if they're talking to them about inclusive language, if they're talking to them about what's being taught in schools, this is a how-to book about how to have those conversations in a constructive mm -hmm. way. I set forth the 10 principles that I think are really critical mm -hmm. to having a healthy society. And number one is, be who you are on purpose. Mm -hmm. Live with intentionality. Don't just wake up and react to what the world throws at you. Be who you are on purpose. And that means consciously decide what's important to you mm -hmm. and pursue that with intention and own it. Mm -hmm. Don't run from it, own it. Somebody said, did you say that? Yes, I did. That's right. And I'll and say why? it again. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and why. Yeah. One thing that I would like to touch upon, we are all very outspoken members of the media. How do you take the power away from this cancel culture? Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> <laughs> one of the best ways to steal someone's power is to convince them they never had any. Mm. And if you can get people to recognize that they control their own destiny, that they do have power, now you've got someone that is awakened and that's a whole different ball game. Right now they have a lot of people who think, well, what am I, I'm one voice. Right. Well, that one voice matters and you have a personality, then you have a collective personality. Mm -hmm. And if somebody comes after you, and I stand up with you, and you stand mm -hmm, up right. with you, and your neighbors stand up with yeah. you, and your family stands up with you, then all of a sudden they go, oh, uh, she's not such an easy target. She's got an awful lot of people yes. willing to stand up with her. We're not so easy to pick off. Uh, they've been trying to cancel me for before cancel was even cool. 
Uh, <laughs> or cancel was a word. <laughs> but I just keep showing up, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yes. Call their bluff and never give up. Exactly. You know? And have your backers. There is an intentional effort, whether or not you want to acknowledge it or not, to divide our country. Talk about that and why that's happening. Well, you know, if you actually look at history, we've got some things I acknowledge in here that we have intercepted as far back as the 60s yeah. uh, from the Soviet Union mm -hmm. that we're talking about how to subvert a society. And this was a document that uh, was intercepted. It, it was just spy work uh, that was done. And it talked about the way you can divide this society is first you need to get the children confused. Mm -hmm. right. Then you need to get society divided. You need to undermine people's uh, sense of worth and, and value. Uh, you need to get them to start second guessing. At the conclusion of this document, they said, you know what? They're really doing, a, doing it for us. They're doing it yeah. for us. It's already done. Our work is already done. We need, need to sit back and let it unfold. Mm. Well, in your book, you also, there's a line that has resonated deeply with us when we've been discussing this. That quote is, there's no victory in victimhood. I have a niece, I have a nephew. And one of the things that will get me to basically come out of my skin is to watch someone tell a young person that you're a victim. Mm -hmm. And you can't do something because of where you are from, what you look like, the parameters that so-called are placed around you. Can you talk a little bit about why there's such an effort to promote victimhood? Mm. Well, you're never weaker than when you're angry. Mm -hmm. Because to be angry, you have to decide I've been victimized in some way, I've been hurt in some way. Well, you know what? We have to own our own journey. And if, if I've got a hill to climb, I can't think of a better country I would rather climb it in than America. Mm, yes. And I don't care whether you start out on third base, dugout, or dumpster. You've got to climb out and do what you need to do. Do we need to do a better job of getting everyone an equal track to run on? A hundred percent. Absolutely we do. I've got to do everything I can do to get where I am and not sit around looking for someone to blame. Nobody wants to hear you whine. I don't care what they say to your face. They don't want to hear you whine. They want to get, they want to see you get up and work hard. Which really circles us back to something that you wholeheartedly believe in. It is the cornerstone of your book and that is the family unit and getting back, getting the family unified. I almost dare to say reunified because I feel like there hasn't even been the kind of unification that's needed. Well, family in America is under attack by all the things we've been talking about. And that's why the number one principle is be who you are on purpose. If you're a father, mm -hmm. do it with intention. If you're a mother, do it with intention. Mm -hmm. Pull your family back together. Um, recognize that it's not only the backbone of society, but it's your family. And you're not gonna be the only voice in your child's ear, so you need to make sure you're the best voice mm -hmm. in your child's ear. And to do that, uh, you need to be often in your child's ear. Mm -hmm. You need to be talking to them. I tell parents, talk to your children about things that don't matter. That's right, yeah because if you wait until it's time to talk about things that do, it's gonna be really awkward. Mm -hmm. You, you know, need part to be doing this every day. Yeah, that's right. You know, there was a time where most people were proud to be an American, but that has changed. And it's so sad because this is the greatest country mm -hmm. in the world. We have indelible freedoms that give all of us an opportunity to be who we were created to be. But now there is a level of shame that seems to be attributed to being an American and to the American way, what do we do about that? Well, we just have to turn a deaf ear to that. I'm, I, I'm so weary of our leaders apologizing for mm -hmm. America. I mean, it's the first thing they do. Anytime criticism comes up or a country is struggling, uh, you know, they apologize for uh, America. And we don't need to apologize for who we are. We need to take pride in who we are and we need to do the best we can. Everybody thinks about, well, I need to be nice to people. Mm -hmm. Of course you do. But you have to treat yourself with dignity and respect mm -hmm. first. 
and you know we we have our own personality we have our family is a collective personality our community has a collective personality nationally we have a collective personality and you know after 9-11 there weren't any democrats there weren't any republicans everybody was an american mm -hmm. that's right 